very great. Does your Valentine send, send you candy to show his love? Well, he may love you, but that might not be the best way, Lynn. And I'm Frank Field, and today, a man who traded sugar for a wife. Uh, we'd like to introduce you to William Dufty, who substituted Swanson, Gloria, that is, for sugar. Is it a dangerous condiment? A story not for women only. <laughs> What an amazement! What a refreshment! What a mint! A Trident Sugarless Mint! An excitement! An accomplishment! Trident Sugarless Mints. We took out the sugar and added the cool. A chili spearmint. An icy peppermint. A frosty fruit mint. But it's a sugarless mint. And that's good judgment. What a refreshment! Trident Sugarless Mints. The mint that's a mouthful of cool. Ever worry if the breakfast you're serving your family is hearty enough to get them through the morning? I used to, until I served a balanced breakfast including CW Post cereal. It's got hearty rib-sticking things like crunchy rolled oats, rice, whole wheat. Good taste and natural things that are good for them. Nice work, guys. I feel good about serving CW Post because I know it helps keep my family going all morning. You feel good about serving CW Post. 7.30, a special time for you on Channel 4. Want to know more about your community, consumer problems, and current events? Monday night at 7.30, the Community Reports. These specials probe the issues and try to find solutions. Tuesday, 7.30, a time for Rock with Laughter on sha -na -na. Wednesday, 7.30, shakes you into a friendly family feud. That's a time for fun and prizes. Craves. Honey. Chocolate. Chocolate! The greatest of mysteries may soon be solved. We could discover how a human being develops from a single egg. Thursday, in search of. It's Name That Tune, Friday night at 7.30. And Saturday night, 7.30 is definitely the Price is Right time. It's a whole spectrum of entertainment just for you. That's 7.30 on Channel 4. We're talking about sugar with Gloria Swanson, one of the great ladies of American films whose career spans from Max Sennett comedies to the starring role in Sunset Boulevard and most recently, Airport. She's deeply committed to sugar-free natural foods, which she eats and cooks, and she doesn't mind telling us her age. She is 78 years old, seven grandchildren, two great-grandchildren. And also with us is her husband, William Dufty. And now, until William Dufty met Gloria Swanson, he was a confirmed sugar addict. But under her influence, Mr. Dufty kicked the habit. He's written about his cooking and about what changed his life in a book called Sugar Blues. And Mr. Dufty is a prize-winning New York newspaper man and author. And we also have with us uh, at our table, we have three gentlemen who are nutrition experts. And uh, I'd like to introduce them to you. We have with us Dr. Victor Herbert, a lawyer and physician, vice chairman of medicine at Downstate Medical Center and a board member of the National Nutrition Consortium and officer for the American Society of Clinical Nutrition. And two with us, we have Dr. William Darby, who is president of the Nutrition Foundation and a professor of medicine and nutrition at Vanderbilt University. Also with us is Dr. William Philpott. Dr. Philpott has been gathering information doing research on allergic reaction to food and pollutants, which can trigger emotional changes and also violent behavior, and he's on the editorial board of the Journal of Orthomolecular Psychiatry. And you can lead off, Lynn. Very good. Miss Swanson, we've all known for a long time that you're very against sugar. You haven't eaten it for a long, long time. But what else can sugar do to you apart from it? We know it makes you fat, but what, what else is bad about it? Well, it isn't a natural food, and it's so nice to know that we have three nutritionists with us because that's quite unusual for MDs to be nutritionist-minded. And I was fortunate enough years and years ago because I met up and was blessed by being ill when I was in my late 20s and being blessed by meeting a doctor. Well, I say a doctor, I mean an MD, who mm. also became a biochemist and who treated everybody with food instead of drugs. So I've been blessed all my life. And I find that, uh, even according to, the, uh, to his way of thinking, that uh, sugar not being a natural food, being man-made, every time man tampers with something, you can be sure it's not as good for you as a natural, normal thing. 
And uh, as a child, I was brought up on sugar cane. But when that white stuff came along, and we, in those days, I'm talking about way back when, because I've been around long enough to remember, that no one ate uh, 100 and some odd pounds of sugar a year, which seems to be the consumption now, according to statistics, even from the AMA. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, there was so much sugar, sugar, sugar has been one of those things that is getting more and more and more on the t in the food, the packaged food, because we're going into more packaged foods. When I was a little girl, there wasn't so much packaged foods. So I found that, uh, according to my Dr. Beeler, he told me that I shouldn't have sugar nor salt because uh, uh, I just did, uh, uh, salt was just as bad almost as sugar as far as the arteries are concerned and the fact that it was also sea salt was something else again. But when you tamper with it and you put something in it to keep it from coagulating and something else to make it white and you do the bleaching, it's like the white flour. I don't want any of these things in my home. So for a long time, I have been eating what is called natural food. Some people call it organic food. and. Uh, that's what I'm interested in now is the soil because we know about the pollution of the air and of the water. I won't even use tap water in my cooking. I use bottled water and even then I boil that. And I'm about to even, uh, there's controversy about uh, distilled water and regular water. And my, my feeling was that if God had wanted us to have distilled water, there'd be springs of it. But now with the, with the pollutants in the air and with everything going into the, into the water, uh, even the reservoirs and even with the business of the old houses with their old uh, copper pipes and things like that you don't know what you're getting how about how about the idea Ms. Swanson, of, of, uh, of moderation i mean isn't it possible for somebody to have a little salt a little sugar well I mean, you know what i believe stop? i believe that those people uh, in my generation and before me who had good solid earlobes and had good adrenals because the first thing that this doctor this md doctor told me when i went to him with problems in my <clears throat> stomach, thinking I had ulcers because I was producing pictures at the time. It turned out I was just uh, not eating properly and also indigestion. The first thing he said to me, the first words out of his mouth is, take your earrings off. And I thought I was in the presence of some widow. And look for the exit and the nurse, because oh, if he said, take your blouse him. off, he wanted to see if I had good, healthy earlobes. Now remember, the children born today, these youngsters, don't have that. And his contention was, that they have, they have weak adrenals. And when you have weak adrenals, you can't stand as much as you can. Uh, you can abuse yourself if you have good, strong heredity, good, strong adrenals, good, strong glands. But I'm, uh, as, as I sit here now, I believe that the coming generation, if it continues with the food polluted, as it is, and manufactured, man-made, that we're gonna have weaklings. I, when I was a little girl, there wasn't even all this retardation. But there wasn't even crime in teenage. For goodness sakes, that doesn't come from the color of the sky. Do, are you saying then that the food we eat is, is causing criminals? Well, either, yeah, I would think so, because it affects the mind. Now look here, we have water, supposed to have decent water. Do we have it these days? No. Do we have decent air to breathe with a lot, enough oxygen in it? No. So our bodies are trying to adjust, and during this trying to adjust itself and getting a, a balanced metabolism, for goodness sakes, we're getting a lot of uh, illnesses, things that my ancestors, my parents didn't die. They weren't all crippled with arthritis. They weren't all wrecks. Now everybody is in an old lady's home or an old man's home and they're vegetables and you keep them alive and everything else. How did, how did and you... And my God, the brain isn't working anymore. You ask a person a question, by the time they moved over there, they've forgotten what you said to them. <laughs> how did you straighten out that, Rick? I, he said I hissed at him. I, and he also said that George Bernard Shaw said if you want somebody to remember something, say it in an, in an irritating way. Well, obviously, I saw this blubber sitting next to me putting coffee, uh, sugar in his coffee, sugar, 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 and I said something I, that probably was rude. I, in those days, I was a fanatic on the subject. Now you could, he could eat ground glass if that's the way he wants to kill himself. It's all right. <laughs> now I'm more calm about the situation. Well, Mr. We'll Duffy, how did, how did you get over the, your addiction? Well, was it just the, the, the rude words that Miss Swanson said to you? Well, I, had no, I was a complete nutritional illiterate. I knew nothing about my body. I Nobody knew nothing, nothing about food. About and yet I was, I was uh, supposedly an educated man. I was writing editorials, telling the rest of the world how to behave and so on and yet I couldn't barely get to the office. And Gloria, out of some sure feminine instinct, 
zeroed in on that sugar cube. And of course, uh, when I, at, at a point where, you know, you think you're healthy if you're able to get out of bed and sign into the office. And I reached the point eventually where I couldn't sleep, eat, move. I had migraine headaches were so bad, and I went through all the tests. I tried everything. And at that point, I remembered these in her injunction. I was reminding somebody else, and I tried. I thought, well, I tried everything else. I will try it. And I tried to kick sugar. It was at that point I made a personal discovery, one that it is addicting, something that nobody had ever told me about before. And secondly, the kind of reactions that you can have when you try to kick it. Fortunately, I'd been around enough junkies so I could relate directly to them, to the withdrawal symptoms. You had withdrawal symptoms when sure, you stopped taking sugar? Sure, sure, sure. And uh, understanding that what was happening to me was probably the result of what I was stopping, stop eating, rather than what I had begun eating. And at that point, I had to ask myself, how could I reach this advanced age and be so dumb about my own body? And I began looking around and asking questions. And the result of the, that whole odyssey is, is the book. You know, I had to answer my, for myself how I could get that mm -hmm. to that state. From, from what little reading I get to do, mm -hmm. I, I think the medical consensus from the experts right. is that inorganic, uh, uh, the organic way of growing. Do you think really there's any such thing, excuse me, sir, an expert? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. If you don't mind, I've got three experts in-house, folks. I bet they won't call themselves experts. Well, all every right. Day, I, I, I guess maybe I... And every person is different. You're true. Okay, let me, let me you, just but refer... But you were talking about consensus. That, that's what I think the point is that we're arriving at now. You know? All right, but the idea is it's wonderful to be able to eat this food that's untainted, that uh, is natural. Yes, it is. But unfortunately, apparently, there isn't enough of this stuff to go around. And yeah, those but unless who we make a fuss about it, it's going to continue True. and it's going to get worse. I say people vote at the supermarket, and the tremendous change that's happening in our food supply is a result, just the result of the kind of yapping we've been doing and the kind of programs like this. And because reading, people and they can read get what stuff. they want, and if they can't, there's something wrong. All right, let me let me turn to some of our. Uh, I quote. I. I We'll call them experts. Right. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Herbert, the how do you feel about the question of, of uh, the organic, the, the 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 entire? Well, there's a very good new book out called The Health Robbers, which deals with various forms of health quackery, including nutrition quackery. It's the first book that I know of. The Consumer Reports did a book review on, and it has a chapter entitled The Organic Fake which deals with the organic argument. The fact is that if one evaluates what actually goes on in health food stores, as was done in the city of New York, one finds that what they are selling are the same materials, essentially, as are being sold across the street in the supermarket. In fact, one investigator for the city uh, got herself a job in a health food store, and when they ran out of so-called organic lettuce, and all lettuce is organic, obviously. They told her to go across the street to the local supermarket and buy the 29 cent a head lettuce, which she did, and bring it back to the health food store, label it organic, and sell it for 75 cents. The U.S. Department of Agriculture did studies on pesticide content of so-called organic vegetables versus so-called non-organic, which is a nonsense description because all vegetables are organic by definition. Well, but don't the and organic materials the, get more of the trace materials that are in the no, soil? No, that's not they true. Don't? The U.S. Department of Agriculture did studies on trace metal content and found that trace metal content can be affected by what's in the soil, and there may be more of some trace metals in soil richer in those trace metals, but there is no effect on vitamin content of nutrients according to the USDA studies because vitamin content is a different thing and if there is an inability for the plant to have the vitamins it needs, the plant just doesn't grow. So you don't have a plant. Okay. There, uh, I don't care what the Department of Agriculture says or what the doctors say. I say that anybody has got a palate, and you can take a tomato from the supermarket and you take a tomato growing in your backyard, which is the one I'm talking about, and anybody tells me those are the same tomatoes, it, it has to be crazy because yeah. they're not the and same thing. I so I say trust yourself and not the Department of but Agriculture. The gentleman's quite right about cheating, but that has nothing to do with what is on the, on the store. For instance, I went to a convention of health stores 
and said I was going to help close them up if they didn't take the word health off, unless they policed everything they sold in those stores. So I agree, that is happening. But then, on the other hand, just because there are crooks in the world doesn't mean that we should leave our doors open. We have to have some sense ourselves, and we're only responsible to ourselves. We must teach people that they are responsible for their own, own health when they're old enough to understand. But unfortunately, the education today, where a child grows up and an, an astronaut, no doubt, goes to the moon, comes back, knows how to do that. But if you asked him about his spleen or his liver or the function of the liver, he wouldn't even know where it was. Well, there's uh, a question <laughs> about that there's a need for nutrition education. You bet there is, and that's what I'm doing the, in Albany. Well, uh, okay, the, we're going to take a minute out now, educate ourselves on some other matters, make a little money, and we'll be right back. Be careful. You can't help worrying about children. But when I found out almost 50% of all American children don't get enough vitamin C, I knew that was one thing I wouldn't have to worry about, because I found a perfect solution, Tang. My family loves the natural orange flavor. And each glass of Tang has a full day supply of vitamin C. Mm, good, Mom. <laughs> Thanks. Tang Instant Breakfast Drink. A delicious way to do something good for your family. Are you a denture wearer? Yes, I am. Do you use extra strength effort? No, I don't. Would you try effort on this denture material, badly stained with tea? Yes. In between, these stains are dirty looking. I wouldn't like them in my mouth. Watch effort and with five cleaning ingredients attack stubborn tea stains. In minutes, the stains are gone. Incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. The tea stains are all gone from in between. Now, what's your reaction to this whole thing? I'm going to buy a box of effort and that's what I'm going to do. Extra strength effort and removes even stubborn stains between teeth in minutes. Two people to watch who are watching out for you. I'm Frank Field. Betty Furness and I search out useful information for you. The Heimlich Maneuver was a lifesaver. And you lost some extra pounds on my easy diet. If a new drug turns up, I'll let you know whether it's helpful or just plain worthless. And I'll let you know if there's an alternative drug that might cost less. As a consumer, you have a right to protection, and I aim to help you keep that right. I'm watching your pocketbook as if it were my own. You should afford. Watch us. We're watching out for you. What's behind the name Donahue? Colorful guests, controversial issues. My grandfather was 95 when he told me, he said, people worry about senility. He said, don't worry about it. I said, why? He said, because when you become senile, you won't know it. For interesting conversation in the morning, join Dorothy Hamill, Bill Cosby, and many other fascinating guests on Donahue, a unique adult talk show. Watch me weekday mornings at 9 here on Channel 4. Now, sugar is on the table of every American home, every American restaurant. You can't escape. Uh, maybe now there are some substitutes, but uh, what do you do, Miss Watson, when it comes to sugar substitute? How I'm do you get your power? I'm a sweet tooth. I want something sweet. Dates are wonderful. It's providing they're not uh, sprayed with a lot of sulfur or something. They're allowed to be sun-dried or something, and that's the difference that I make and uh, also raisins and you we cook and bill makes a uh, wonderful bread and he makes uh, some wonderful desserts and we have uh, 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 you can make something that's gorgeous with dates and raisins and cashew nuts and and uh, shredded coconut and it's as sweet as you want to make it because you put more sweetener in by putting more dates in it there's nothing have wrong you mentioned about your book uh, something we about need boiling we some uh, raisins yeah, is you it and you get the water. juice of it use raisin water in your cooking which is marvelous Not it's a natural food this food. morning i had oatmeal and it was made from the water from chestnuts that had been soaked overnight and cooked so i had i had oatmeal uh without sugar with a package uh, without milk, and, and without milk and without make it loose enough and with it the, with these things which is full of rutin which I want, and when I want more of it, I'll take some buckwheat. See, I think we're in a period of the rediscovery of the obvious, and the thing is we have to recover our memory. After all, what we call sucrose is a fairly recent development in the history of man. We're talking about really the last hundred years. We got along without it, and fine. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many ways to go. There are so many ways to go. The Orientals have honey. something. Do you, do you use oh, honey? honey? Yes. Sure. And, and, and fruit. And fruit. Quantity yes. changes quality. I think that. The, our level of uh, sugar addiction is so high that we have to taper off and it, if, if we can reach the point where we can appreciate the natural taste of natural unsweetened fruit. 
because there's no reason for all this heavy uh, uh, saturation with sugar, except that we're at a high level of addiction. We've been programmed because with sugar and everything, if you start off with what is called a Danish in the morning for yeah. breakfast, then, then where do you go to go own, for a dessert? Yes. But if you start out with a with a, uh, a whole taste of uh, oatmeal grains without sugar and salt. Well, then when you have your one dessert at night, which is a piece of fruit, it tastes sweet and great to you. You don't need sugar. I had watermelon yesterday afternoon. It was a period of where I ate just nothing but watermelon. And and there is nothing sweeter than that. Gorgeous. No. Uh, but, but is there really a health danger, do you feel, that in any use of refined sugar? We, I think the American public is acquainted with the fact that sugar may be related to dental caries, to tooth well, decay. But is it related to other How about it? diabetes? How about the whole heart area and how about cancer but how about amounts of sugar I mean there are people out there who insist on having they a get it unknown to them they go to a restaurant there is nothing practically in a tin can that doesn't have sugar in it mm -hmm. there is nothing you can eat even the salt has sugar in it <laughs> yeah Frank Field hey I just sure. asked glorious once a Victor question uh, you mentioned that when you were a child you ate cane sugar and it was fine sugar it was healthy cane. yeah sugar cane and that's sugar before cane. it was that's processed that's sucrose no, you sugar just said cane, sucrose. The whole cane. I said That's sucrose. Glucose. Well, all right, let's it's one of the things in it. That you said is no good. But I it's don't, a complete food. You? It's got all the minerals. It's got all the fiber. The point is what sucrose is 90% of the cane has been thrown out. And nothing is left to so you. So the you sucrose don't is the all right. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me ask Doc. The sucrose is good then if it's in cane sugar. But if it's bad, if you extract it from the cane right. sugar, is that the position? Concentration changes. So the same chemical you say is different when you eat it in the raw as when you eat it processed. Uh, You're saying the different. molecule is different? Of it isn't, you know. You, right, scientifically, we, we don't it's the molecules. identical molecule. Dr. Herbert, let me ask Dr. Darby. He wanted to bring out a point here. Dr. Darby is the president of the Nutrition Council. Nutrition well, one Council, of the points I'd like to make is that uh, uh, all of the sweet fruits and substances that uh, we have heard are very good for you have sugar in them. But naturally. natural. And they have, a, they have a considerable amount. In fact, uh, things like uh, dried, uh, dried figs and uh, uh, Fresh raisins grapes. and so forth will have a very considerable amount of sugar, uh, 16 to 30 percent sugar. Now, uh, so that if you go on such a diet, you're not avoiding sugar. Secondly, uh, the, the claim that uh, our, uh, our health is being ruined by the foods that we're eating is obviously wrong. It's obviously uh, a, a mistaken claim because if you look at our life expectancy figures, which were released about two weeks ago, they're the highest and longest in history. If you look at our infant mortality rate, uh, our infant mortality rate is the lowest in history. If you look at what has happened since about the, uh, the 19 teens, uh, you will find that uh, we have had a complete disappearance of the deficiency diseases in this country. And uh, if you look at the statistics on consumption of sugar in this country, you will find that our highest peak of consumption was in 1920. And uh, since that time, there has been a dip in the consumption. And now it's just almost to the 1920 level again. What's the danger in sugar? Uh, well, the danger, only danger in sugar is that of using uh, such a tremendous quantity of sugar that uh, you dilute your diet otherwise. And by tremendous quantity, I mean that you would have to go up to 20% or 25% of your diet, of your total calories. Okay, I, I don't think... It goes up that much, and sometimes the packaged food is 50% sugar. And the rest air, I suppose. But, I, but, but I'm Are talking about the amount in your total diet, not the amount in a particular food. You don't eat yes, just that every, food. No, but it's right. in everything. But don't you think, doctor, we ought to have on the packages in the store the percentage of sugar that's no. in that stuff? Why I see not? no reason for it. Why not? Because you're going to eat what you like. Yes, but you yeah, just but got you through saying a tremendous amount of what you're getting bad. in that food. I mean, you can so put it on. You, you, you can, you, if you want it on, you can look for packages that have it on. Because no, but doctor, there's certain cereals, like my children... Uh, um, love sugar. Yeah, they're not too top much. of it they put That's sugar. That's right, and there are certain cereals that I was totally unaware because I was uh, ill-informed and didn't read packages that I didn't know they already had sugar in, a large quantity in fact, and many of them are sold and, and the children all want them and there are others that such as shredded wheat, I think, that doesn't have yeah, sugar. Yeah, now we have schools with those, the, with those things the, uh, in the corners. The amount of sugar that right. is put on the sugared cereals uh, is the amount, and sometimes much less, 
than a child will put on if you give him the unsugared cereal, because that is that is the reason it's prepared. Well, I think... Doctor, uh, I are think you the Nutrition Council or the Nutrition Foundation? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm the Nutrition Foundation. It's right. the Nutrition and Foundation. And you're supported largely by grants from the food companies, right? I, we're, we're supported in part. We're supported by the federal like government. We're supported by, by individuals. Well, well okay. That has, well, that's very important. All right, gentlemen, well, I think... Very important. Okay. I'm talking I about think, labeling. You ought to be think, labeled. Right. Well, you're you selling a book. Let's look at it. Well, you're selling a book. Listen, I've labeled myself. We're going to have to go to a commercial. Let's Quick. I see you have uh, two jello puddings, two of them. Uh-huh. Uh, you love jello pudding enough to eat two of them by yourself? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, uh, here's a small person with two jello puddings and the big person has none. Feel guilty? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kids love jello brand pudding, and since it's probably on your shelf, why not make some tonight? You sure you like jello pudding? <laughs> Guess who's coming for a visit? Uh-oh. Uncle Emery. Sarah, this dessert isn't good enough for Tucker in. The gingerbread's not finished, Emery. To me, it's just not dessert without the great fresh taste of Cool Whip. Does taste fresh. I wouldn't use anything else. Now, it's not only good enough for guests, it's good enough for family. Emery, a compliment from you? Cool Whip, non-dairy whip topping. It's just not dessert without the great fresh taste of Cool Whip. I was prepared to do anything to have a baby, and that's just what I did. Read the amazing story of the world's first test tube baby, the Miracle Mother, and how the doctors did it in The Star. Keith Jackson tells all about that tension-packed day Farrah came back to the angels in The Star. Next, ways to cook food to reduce the risk of cancer. Her sister reveals eight-year feud with superstar Loretta Lynn in this week's Star. And it's all in The Star, the world's fastest-growing magazine. News Center 4 and the News Desk at 6 with Jack Hafferty, Pia Lindstrom, and Carol Jenkins. People and events plus information that works for you. News Center 4's Find Investigative Unit is a Peabody Award winner. We have more mini cameras to give you live on the spot coverage. With your buying power, you have a right to protection. I'll help you keep that right. Our health reports are good for life. The Heimlich Maneuver saved over a thousand lives. Watch us. We're watching out for you. Now, Lynn Redgrave, you get a chance to talk. Terrific. I, I have to say that I'm looking forward to tomorrow when our experts were with us again because I'm staggered that, the, that Dr. Darby should say that it shouldn't, the contents of something shouldn't be listed on the package. You're going to eat what you like anyway. Uh, most of what my children like is lethal, awful stuff, so I want to bring him to task for that statement tomorrow. Goodbye. Join us. <laughs>